Well, we're back with the Sussman Sam, but this one is a little bit different. We've got two cars here, two blokes that have built them from the ground up, and they are some very unique builds, let me tell you. We're gonna start over here, introduce yourself, and your car. Hi, I'm Thomas. Uh, this is my 1996, I guess, Toyota Land Cruiser, uh, sitting on an 80 chassis, 40 body, 79 series motor. Wild. And yourself? Yeah, I'm Brett. Um, pretty similar to Thomas. Um, 80 series chassis, 1980 40 series cruiser with a 1BD motor. Wild. I put the call out on Instagram to try and find some cars to film. Brett hit me up and said he doesn't just have one sick ass 40 series, he's actually basically got the matching twin to it. Now, these guys have been tinkering in the sheds together for what, best part of three to four years? Mm -hmm building these things up from the ground. I know, Brett, you've had a special love affair with 40s for quite a while. Oh, yep. You had the other one for, what, since you were 15? 15. So obviously 40s were gonna be a big part of builds going in the future for you. How did this whole thing start? I'm assuming there was probably some beers involved, sitting at a round table, deciding the terrible financial direction you were gonna go in. Did you both always love 40s? So I wanted a 40, but Brett took me out of uh, dailying a 40. Okay. We looked at a few together yep. for myself. He talked me out of it and it was one night around a campfire. He's like, you can't date a 40, but you can date it on an 80 chassis. I like it. Yeah. I see the logic. Yeah. Falls away more comfortable, better brakes, etc. Now, the conversion we'll talk a little bit more a little bit later, but obviously there's way easier conversions than trying to fit a massive 1VD into the front of one of these. Was that always the option? You always wanted to do this sort of build with that engine or were there a couple of different options in mind? For Thomas, I think it was always a 1VD. Uh, for me, it was FTE, but um, okay. I think sourcing an FTE was bloody yeah. hard, so um, yeah. Thomas talked me into probably the 1VD. So nice. Just, no regrets. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. No, 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 no. I mean, uh, the price of FTEs now versus the price of a 1BD is unbelievable. Yeah. Like, the fact that they're pretty similar, if not maybe even cheaper for a 1BD. Also, with an FTE, half the time it'll cook when you get them. So, that's probably nice having a low, lower case, like modern engine in the front of one of these. Yeah. Wild. Well, they're very similar builds. I absolutely love what you guys have done with them. I think 80 chassis sick, 40 body sick, engine's cool. We're going to dive into this each car individually. We'll probably start with Brett's. We're going to run you through exactly how they've built these cars from the ground up, the subtle differences between them. And uh, I reckon you guys can have your vote at the end of this video as to which one you prefer. We can start a little bit of Brett and Thomas rivalry. Well, this isn't just any other 40 series that's had a bit of chop shop stuff done to it. This is the next level on all avenues. You've done an absolutely fantastic job. Probably start with one of the most obvious things and the highest impact things is basically fully restored bodywork, right? Exactly, yep. Um, yeah, 1980, 45, stand blast everything. Fully painted, so. Yeah, and the factory June beige colour and the white, such a sick combination. Quintessential 40 series, it looks absolutely sick. I do love the combination, it, albeit even if it's accidental, of the patinaed front bar and the patinaed visor as well. It's definitely a cool little blend between modern and, um, and retro, that's for sure. I guess we start from the bottom and work our way up. The story of the, the 80 series staff, I'm assuming you probably originally wanted to go 80 series for practicality, drivability, and all those sorts of things. Yeah, so yeah, one of the Land Cruiser, so went the 80 series, and yeah, just getting coils all around, disc brake all around. Yeah, definitely the best way to go into a build like this, especially if you're gonna start putting a bit of power into them as well. Trying to put that through horse and car suspension is never gonna be fun, so it's probably a good thing. You took the 80 series chassis and decided, let the snowball snowball, so you then started pulling it apart and doing things like the flipped arms in the front, yeah. did the suspension. Yep, so it's, yeah, suspension, been lifted slightly, yeah. built Fox shocks under there, um, flipped. Put the radius arms. Yeah, nice. And it's sitting on 35s, and important thing to note is that it's completely legal. Both these cars yep. completely legal and engineered for the body on the chassis with the engine, which is super sick, super important as well. And obviously for engineering and stuff like that, you have to do anything with the brakes. Yeah, we put, um, or for me myself, I'll put a double five gram booster in there. Yeah, the engineer wanted that. Yeah, nice. No, it's probably pull it up pretty well, I can imagine. It does. saying before, it's relatively light with the canopy off. Yep. Yeah, so 2.4 tonne. 2.4 tonne. Yeah, nice. Do you know what the canopy weighs? Uh, it's about 500. Okay, so still not too bad. Yeah, it's still a pretty lightweight setup. Yeah, nice. And if you built this predominantly for touring? Yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the back of the canopy set up. Yeah, yeah, the bridge and the entry and yeah. the rest. Put the water on board and battery set up. So yeah, nice. It's yeah. a little home away from home. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Now, up the front, it's a pretty basic setup. Warm range, high lift, a couple of steadies, and that kind of thing. I don't want to dwell too much on the front of this because I want to show the people what's under here. 
because it's ridiculous in the best possible way. When Brett told me that there was a 1VD in the front of this, having done an LS into 40 at Spares Box, a new packaging, that thing was tied. And LSs are quite compact. I know Toyota chose violence when they built the 1VD with its packaging because it's just a sprawled mess of toyota -y goodness. So when you take a peek inside here and you see how he's done it, you'll be pretty damn impressed. Now this engine is the notorious 1VD, the 4.5 V8 turbo diesel that came in 78s, 76s, 79s, the, the best part of, I don't know, even 10, 15 years now. Tell us where you got the motor from, the history, what you've done to it. And... Yeah, so I've searched for a little bit uh, online on the auctions, trying to get a 79 series just a wreck, and yeah, pretty much came across this in Townsville, traded it down, had 130,000 Ks on it. Nice. Yeah, and pretty much got everything else out of it, the wiring harness, um, yep. the dash, what we see. Yeah, motor-wise, it's just stock standard for now? Uh, it's been tuned slightly, um, getting a bit over 200 horsepower. Yeah, I was gonna say, a car that weighs 2.4, and for a reliable tour, yeah, that's probably perfect. The air box, the snorkel, the air intake and that sort of thing, a blend of you and, and other people doing it? Yeah, pretty much. The air intake, yeah, it's all custom, making it work. Um, yep. Taken the top mount intercooler off and put one up front and pretty much just made it all work. Yeah, as we could. I was gonna say, the packaging in here, like if it was 5% bigger, it would be. <laughs> It's like every little available nook and cranny of this engine bay is well and truly being used. Obviously there's no battery in here, I'm assuming you have to relocate that. Yeah, there's no chance it's got to fit under here, so yeah. we put it under the tray, or two batteries under there. Yeah. yeah as well as the uh, fuel filters. Yeah. Put them under the tray as well. Yeah, and it keeps it tight in here as well, which is really cool. In terms of engine mounts? Engine mounts are all custom. Yeah. Um, they weren't going to work with the AC machine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, so you just yeah. start it again? Exactly. Yeah. Nice. And then driveline wise, 79 series. 79 five series, speed. Um, five speed, yeah. um, H151, but it's been converted into H152 yeah. this year. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. Awesome drop those revs when you're cruising on the highway. Yep. Sick. Diff gears, are they still? Original diff gears. Just, um, um, yep, um, yeah. just had lockers put in both diffs. Yep. Nice. Over apart, so. Yeah. Is it just standard axles and stuff like that for now? Yep. If you've ever seen a 79 series engine bay and the debauchery that that is, and then you see this and how much work has gone into making this fit nicely and neatly to a point where it actually kind of looks like it could have come in your factory, is a serious monumental effort and well done. And obviously these things are quite tricky because you need to be able to run the loom and the dash and the ECU and make it all talk. Yeah. But is that much of a headache? Um, not so much. Yeah, we decided to go with the 79 series dash. So most of the wiring harness is just um, original harness. Yep. Just had to move a few plugs here and there yep. to make it all work. But apart from that, it's all factory ECU and harness. Well, I reckon it's a good segue to jump into the cab and have a look at the dash because what he's done in there to integrate the 70 dash into the 40 series is very, very now the inside of this thing is absolutely sick. It's the attention to detail that's, I think, taken this car from a 10 out of 10 to a 12 out of 10, in my honest opinion. The most incredible thing about the engine conversion and, and all that and making it all work together is how you've grafted the actual 70 series dash into the what's in front of you here. Yeah. Was yeah. it a monumental task, I'm imagining? Yeah, so it doesn't just bolt in, believe no, it or not. Funny um, about 45 mil smaller in width. Uh, and it would be something like 50 mil off in depth, so we cut it yeah, down in depth to push it back to the firewall as close as we could. 45 mil through the center of the glove box. Yeah, right. Or either side of the glove box to make the handle still. To make it all do the thing. Yeah. yeah, nice. I like that you're uh, OCD enough yeah. to <laughs> let that bug you because I'd be the same. I'm yeah. like, this is not going to be okay. Still VDJ, like 70 series stalks, yep. wiper motor. So everything here is, yeah, 79 series. Yep. Yeah, wiper motor, changed around in the box up there. All the stalks work. All the Hullapalooza works. Yeah. I like it. Even like things down to like attention to detail, like the idle up button and all that sort of stuff, all just still works as it should, which is sick. That's like the last 5% that a lot yeah. of people would just <laughs> not bother doing. And it's that is what really sets this apart. And then one thing we should have mentioned before, but we didn't, was obviously these things are not drive by wire uh, originally, obviously. And this has now got the 79 series pedal in it. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we got all that from the wreck that, that we got, which made it a lot easier. So. Yeah. Do you reckon that's the best way to do it? Is just buy a whole. Exactly. Yeah. Not um, one and take yeah. all the bits. All the parts we use that you wouldn't be able to name. Yeah. The, yeah. And you're like, oh, them. we really need that. Thankfully you've got it. Yeah. Otherwise you're trying to source all these little bits and pieces. Yeah. hundred percent. Super tidy in here, man. What seats are you sitting on? Uh, VE seats. Yep. Got them with Marketplace. Comfy upgrade. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well worth doing, I think. Centre console fridge. Yeah. Central. Definitely. Yep. Aircon works. Yes. 
<laughs> uphill battle, but yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. I think 40 series insulation. It's about as good as a tuna can. Uh, and then you go and put a massive V8 like that in the front of these things. The heat soak through said tin can is probably pretty intense. So yes, yeah, it just you, comes in. Yeah, yeah, constantly fighting a losing battle. But you know that's fine. You got windows. You got the corner glass. Exactly. You make it work. Head unit, UHF, all that sort of stuff. What are we looking at? Yeah, so we just got a, a standard head unit. Um, just a Galaxy tablet. Galaxy tablet that yep. we can run maps and stuff on. Sick. Yeah, UHF. Um, cool. All the rest of it. We lock the switches and different pieces up there. Yep. You got air on board. Yes, yep, yep, yep. Sick. Compressor up there. Yeah, yep. nice, very cool. I mean, we've got the reversing camera as well, yeah. and dash cam and bits and pieces. Exactly. Nice. I think it's the perfect blend between techie and still sort of period correct, which is kind of cool. Freaking love the factory wheels. I know it's like <laughs> such a dumb thing. And when we built the other one, he got rid of the factory wheel and I was devastated. I was like, you'll regret that. Just... Yeah, it was one of the things I wanted to keep. So yeah. it was a bit of mucking around, but managed to make it work. So. Yeah, obviously this column and stuff is... 79 series. 79 series, yeah. Um, and then just had to, yeah, make the spline and everything on, on the wheel work. So. Yeah, gotcha, like a boss kit type situation. Yeah. Marry yeah. it all up. Pretty much. Yeah, dope. And then the roof console, did you do yourself? Or? I did, yeah. Yeah. And then metal roof? Yeah. Metal roof. Yeah, nice. Becoming yeah. A, a rare thing nowadays. Exactly. A lot yeah. of fiberglass roofs getting around, which is... Yeah, it did come with a fiberglass roof, but um, managed to source the steel. Yeah. So, yeah, nice. Well done. I think that's um, another thing that sets a lot of builds apart is having those, those sorts of little details and stuff. Looking in here, you're quite a tall fella. How's the visibility out with uh, the visor? So that's a new... A new add-on yeah. from yeah not so long ago. Gotcha. Um, I always wanted a visor, so I think I'm just putting up with it for now. <laughs> fair, 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 because I'm looking from here and I'm like, it'd be kind of like trying to drive a car through a uh, letterbox, I think. Traffic lights are a bit of an issue. Mm, yeah. yeah, you're looking at it, you're like, oh, oh it's great. <laughs> yeah, it looks sick, so it's kind of worth it, right? Exactly. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Awesome, man. That in here is super sick, super tidy. Door cards. Aftermarket? Um, custom, I made them myself. Yep, nice. Power windows? Power windows, yep. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What's Had that? Them. Out of the... Uh, uh, 80, se uh, 80 series motors. Yeah. Um, and I pretty much just fabricated it myself, making it making it work. So. Yeah, sick. That's impressive. All these little things that... Yeah, yeah all the little yeah. details, it just elevates it, right? Like, just like the 40 series mechanism, but little 80 series window motors and stuff. Yeah. Clever, man. Very clever. And then it's cool that like when you did the restoration work on this, all new rubbers throughout the whole thing. Definitely. Like, yeah. Even like the little rubbers in between the roof and the body, like cockpit and stuff, like quite hard to get, having had to source all of them recently. Source all uh, genuine parts as well. So. Yeah, 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 difficult and expensive. So <laughs> <laughs> I see the amount of work that's gone on in here. It's, uh, it's mind blowing now. You, you've done really well. So take a look at the canopy and tray, shall we? Tray and canopy. Built yourself? Yeah, built the train myself. Um, yeah. Canopy I got made. Uh, it's aluminium. Yeah, lightweight. Um, and lift off is cool. Yes, yeah. Don't use it too often, but yes, yeah. you need it. It's good to have the option. Yeah. And whilst I'm here and it's fresh in my mind, we were talking about it quickly. In here, there's quite a bit of like living stuff, 12 volt, yeah. pantry, and that sort of thing on the other side. People are probably wondering what the sleeping arrangements and that sort of thing are. Yeah. And then I was started thinking, there's no rooftop tent on this one, but there is on the other 40 series. Yeah, yeah. And then I see the trailer that our cameraman's currently perched on, and then I I realized that there's the rooftop tent, matching spares, trailer suspension is basically 80 series. Yep, yep, had a so, bunch of spare parts on this, so I've made a, made a tinny trailer with the rooftop tent on there. I like it, that's clever. Gets a bit of weight off this thing. So. Yeah, so yeah. before you guys ask, the rooftop tent is on the trailer <laughs> and there's no spare because when you go on a big trip, the spares are on the trailer, so yeah. that's good. Good way to keep it lightweight as well, right? You don't yeah, need exactly. to let it when you're driving around town, so. Yeah. Clever. Before we open this up and have a look at what's inside here, we'll talk about all the bits and pieces that are hidden underneath the tray that couldn't go in the engine bay. Yeah. And it had to sort of be hidden and tucked away. So you've got things like air, fuel filter, water tank, fuel cooler. Yeah, water tank, air tank. Um, compressors under there. Compressor as well, Yeah. Uh, water pump. Um, yeah. When the canopy comes off, the floor of the tray actually flips up on some hinges and you can oh, yeah. access it all through that. So. Ah, clever. Yeah, yeah hopefully you nice. don't have to do it too often. Well, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> fingers crossed, right? But it's never really delayed. Yeah. Canvas? Canvas. Just um, because? Just because. A yeah. um, couple of reasons. I like the look of canvas. Yeah. Um, and also, yeah, it can zip up when you're driving and there's actually a couple of holes. Is it door, aluminium door as well? Okay, cool. Um, so a bit of airflow. And... Nice, yeah, yeah, very cool. Awesome, man. Let's open her up and have a look. I know you've got a, a basic setup in here, but it gets the job done. Yeah, so try to keep it yeah as light as possible. So yeah. did away with any drawers. Yeah. Um, some plastic containers. Yeah, plywood. Yeah. Cut out plywood as much as I can to keep it light. I like it. But yeah, just keep it simple. Man, it's clever. I think people like definitely overthink 
yeah, the setup. And I was guilty of this when I put the canopy on the back of the ute. And I was just like, I wanted cupboards and drawers and things, shit everywhere. And it just got so heavy so quickly and I didn't use any of it. So seeing it like logically set up like this, and it's actually like, actually we don't need all of this to be full of metal drawers and heavy runners and stuff is, is a cool thing. There's a bit of storage, um, have a look. Double the depth, so. Yeah, nice. And then 12 volt, simple but effective. Yeah, there's nothing too crazy. You're running a small inverter, a DC-DC charger. Yeah, a little heated battery charger in there for brilliance. Yeah, see. Let's have a look at the other side and the, the living quarters. This is the living quarters over here. This is where all the nice meal times happen. The kitchen, yep. Cold drinks come from. Again, simple, effective, lightweight. What are we looking at? Um, pull out pantry. Pull out pantry, yep. Um, just, you know. All the, all the things. Most of the stuff you need. Yeah. Get oil in there. Yeah. Sauce, Milo, a couple of exactly. bowls. All essentials. Nice. And all this fire stuff you built yourself. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it keeps it pretty lightweight. Yeah. Storage, pull out the bench. Yep. Nice. Yep. nice. Travel buddy up there. Essential. Meat pies. Yeah. Yummy boys. Definitely. Upright fridge. Simple and effective, man. Yeah. It's a, it's a yeah. really good use of space. We've actually got a load of storage space as well in the canopy still. like. It's obviously not a full length canopy, it's a pretty short canopy realistically yeah. compared to other stuff that's out there, but I don't think you'd ever be strapped for space. Nah, there's always somewhere, some spare room to put something. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, nice. That pretty much brings us to the end of this car. We'll, we'll just have to go grab Thomas, but I'm going to ask you, I'll ask Thomas the same. If you could change one thing about what you've done to this thing so far, what would it be? Yeah, uh, the one thing I probably thought about is if I was to do it again, maybe a 150mm or 200mm in the chassis. Length length the extension. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah right. Apart from that, happy with everything. So. Gotcha. Yeah. Is there anything in particular that makes you really want to do that or just... Um, the... Just the weight ratio. So there's a lot of weight over the back end here. Yeah. Um, so to be able to shift your wheelbase a little bit, yeah, big... it would be handy. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. 150 to 200 in the chassis. Yeah. See what Thomas says as well. Mm. Oh, awesome. <laughs> well, we'll go get Big Fella and um, take a look at his two tone 46. <laughs> <laughs> it's a touchy subject. We'll elaborate on it later. Awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Yeah.